Okay, so this is lesson 8-1, which is solving trigonometric equations using inverses. Our essential question is, how can you use an inverse function to find all the solutions of a trigonometric equation? So the first thing that we have to understand is we have to talk about what an inverse function is. So um, in order for a relation to be a function, it means that its inputs can have only one output. So we think of vertical line test, um, or we think of how we can't have the same x value going to two different y values. So in order to tell if a the inverse of a function is also a function, we use a horizontal line test and we test to see if it's one-to-one. -one. So for example, if I have a cubic graph, and I use a horizontal line test, so anywhere I put a horizontal line, I'm only gonna to touch the graph in one spot. So that would mean a cubic graph is one to one, and we would say its inverse would be a function. However, if we have something like a parabola, that's what we call many to one, because you can see the horizontal line touches in more than one spot. So if we have a situation like that, in order for it to have an inverse, or in order for the inverse to be a function, we have to restrict the domain. So if we look at our graph of sine here, you can tell that a sine graph or cosine graph or tangent or any of our trig functions would be many to one. So in order to have the inverse be a function, we have to restrict the domain. So you can see this, um, orange box here around it, if we restrict the domain from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, then it would be one it would be one to one, and that would mean that its in its function its inverse would be a function. Keep tripping up over the words here. Okay. So we can restrict each of the domains of our sine, cosine, and tangent. So you can see that um, sine is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So if you're thinking of the unit circle, it's going to be the right half of the unit circle. Cosine is between 0 and pi, so that would be the top half of our unit circle. And tangent would be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, same as sine, which would be the right half of our unit circle. Okay, so then getting into what how do we find the inverse of a trig function? So it's saying, what is the inverse sine of a half? So what that's asking us, what we think in our head, is at what angle does, do we have a sine, so a y value, so we know sine is y, of one half. So, and again, remember we've restricted the domain, so with sine we're thinking just on the right side of our unit circle. So in order for us to have, so on the right side of our unit circle, there's only one, one y value that's positive one half, and that would be this point right here, which corresponds to an angle of 30 degrees or pi over six radians. So that would be the answer. We would say the inverse sine of a half is 30 degrees or pi over six radians. Okay, so now we're finding all angles with a given trigonometric value. So it says, what are all of the angles that have a cosine of 0.57? So what we would start with is we go to our calculator and we would do the inverse cosine of 0.57. Now, if we do that, our calculator gives us 55.25 degrees. It could also give you radians if you're in radian mode. So, but for now, we'll focus on um, degrees. So we have 55.25 degrees. There, for every trig value that is not on the x or y axis, we're going to have two values, two angles that have the same cosine value. So the way we think of that is this value of cosine is positive. So we know that cosine is positive in the first quadrant. That's where our 55.25 degrees lands. And then I need to think, okay, what other quadrant is cosine positive? That would be in the fourth quadrant, cosine's positive. So I am going to reflect my angle over into the fourth quadrant, and I'm going to find this new angle that starts at zero and goes all the way around to that line. So that would be 360, 
minus 55.25, which we could say, we could call it negative 55.25, or we could call it 304.25 degrees. So either one of those is going to um, give us that same cosine value. So if I go to my calculator and I type in cosine, oops, cosine of 55.25, you should get approximately, it's rounded, 0.57. And then if I do cosine of 304.25, oops, I, that's wrong. I copied that down wrong. <laughs> In my notes, it should be 0.75. So cosine of 304.75, let's try that. There we go. We get the same value in your calculator. So part B, we're going to do the same thing. So what are all the angles that have a tangent of negative 0.35? So we, to start with, we find our first calculator value. So we type in the inverse tangent of negative 0.35 and we get negative 19.29 degrees. Now, we know that's in the fourth quadrant and that our tangent's negative in the fourth quadrant, and we know that because of our starting problem there. And so I have to think, okay, what other quadrant is tangent negative? That would be in the second quadrant. So we take that same 19.29 and we put it into our reference angle in the second quadrant. So now we're finding from zero all the way over to that line. So that would be 180 minus 19.29, which would be 138.19. Nope, all right, see, I'm messing up today. Okay, I looked at the wrong question. That would be 160.71, <laughs> that sounds better. Okay, having troubles with this problem. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. You find the first one using the calculator, and then you're going to um, ask yourself, where is that um, trig function, so sine, cosine, tangent, either positive or negative, um, what other quadrant does that happen? Okay, so our last example is how can you solve the trigonometric equation 6 sine of theta equals 3 sine of theta plus 2 between 0 and 2 pi? So we're going to solve this just like we would a normal equation. So I'm going to subtract 3 sine of theta from both sides. So that gives us 3 sine of theta equals 2. Then I'm going to divide by 3. So that means that sine of theta is 2 thirds. So if I want to find theta, theta would be the inverse sine of 2 thirds. And so we would get 41.81 degrees. We do that in our calculator, and then same like we just did in the previous example. So 41.81 degrees is in the first quadrant, and sine is positive in the first quadrant. So I think, okay, I'm talking about sine. Where else is sine positive? That would be in the second quadrant. So I'm going to reflect it over here. So that angle right there is 41.81. So I want to find from 0 to that line. So... My other angle would be 138.19 degrees. Okay, 